Wait, I gotta be honest. I don't, I don't normally cook pancakes like this. I never really cook pancakes at all, but I saw pumpkin flavored pancakes at the store last night and I figured, why not, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> all right, let's just start the tour. Howdy, how's it going? Hope you guys are doing doing well. My name is Jonathan and thanks for tuning into this video. If you're new here, welcome. I've been on the road living out of this thing for the last month. And before, before I got this all finalized, I had the camper on a Tacoma and some of the things inside of the camper weren't completely done. I did a tour once upon a time back in the day. You guys might've seen it if you haven't and you're interested in seeing the initial build and the initial setup, then make sure to check that out. But if not, then I'll just give you a tour of this guy right here. Now, since the first build, a few major things have changed, but all in all, a lot of it is still the same. I have gotten things a little bit more dialed to where I like them um, since I've had more time to live in it. The things that I have changed since the first tour that I did, the, these are like really huge things that have vastly improved the overall quality of life while living and traveling in this camper. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. And the first major change, obviously I have a brand new horse for my chariot. That was a very cheesy way to say. I got a new truck. It's a much larger truck. I used to have a 2000 Toyota Tundra. I mean, Toyota Tacoma. This is a 2000 Toyota Tundra. And although the Tacoma I had carried the camper pretty well, you know, it, it, it was a little bit wobbly because the Tacoma is such a smaller truck and the camper just proportionately was much larger on the Tacoma. So now that I have it on the Tundra, it sits in there much more stable and I'm able to actually go on some moderate off-road trails. Nothing crazy, cause it's still pretty top heavy and you don't want to go off camber. But all in all, I think it's I think it's really awesome and I think it was a great move to upgrade to the Tundra. Payload capacity, surprisingly, is just about the same in the Tundra as the Tacoma. So I didn't get really any more extra like carrying capacity. But like I said, just dimension wise, proportion Unfortunately, the camper just does much better in the Tundra. This is a 2000 Toyota Tundra. It's the 4.7 liter V8, 2 UZFE engine. If you're curious, it's an automatic transmission. As far as gas mileage goes with the camper on, honestly, this Tundra isn't, you know, it's obviously not a gas sipper. It's a V8, so it does, it doesn't get the best MPG. But when I put the camper on, I haven't done any like exact scientific number tests or anything like that, but it doesn't seem to really use that much more gas when the camper's in there. The camper is 1,100 pounds dry, and so yeah, the MPGs probably does go down a little bit, but it's overall not as horrible as you might expect. That's a question I get all the time, so I thought I might as well just address that. I guess starting off down here, we have Falcon Wild Peak AT3W tires. They are E-rated, which means that they have a very high weight capacity, and they're meant for carrying heavy loads. These are 285, 75 R16s. Great tires, couldn't say enough good about them. I also, all the way around the truck, I upgraded the suspension to Old Man Emu Nitro Charger shocks. And here on the front, I basically completely rebuilt the front. We got Camberg upper control arms. I also got brand new OEM lower ball joints on both sides. Brand new lower control arms, also OEM. I got a new steering rack, rack and pinion. This is all the stuff I've done to the truck now, basically. But I also have a an Adelief 
an Icon add a leaf to the rear. That adds, I think, an inch lift to the rear. And I also had to add um, Airlift SES, which is a su suspension enhancement system. And it's basically airbags that ride on your rear suspension that help take some of the load off of your, um, your leaf spring. So that is pretty much all of the modifications that I had to do for the camper to this truck. But like I said, I, I, I replaced so many parts on this truck, the transmission pan, a wheel bearing, a wheel cylinder, a lot, a lot. It, it, it cost a lot of money and it took a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears, but I think overall it paid off. So if you guys remember my last build, the camper mounts that I had were custom welded to the frame. And I, when I bought the truck, I thought that that, would, that sounded more ideal. It sounded more sturdy and secure, you know, welded on. They never gave me any problems, but some people were saying that depending on the quality of the welder, it could be, could be sketchy. So anyways, with this build, I got the torque lift, frame mounted tie downs, these bolt onto the frame. They've, they're really great, they're super secure. Uh, I like the fact that they're bolted onto the frame in multiple points. They're expensive, they're, they are damn expensive. I'll tell you, for some metal, some little, some actual just pieces of metal, they're like $800, absolutely crazy. But they're pretty much like, they've got a stronghold in the market and so that's why they charge so much for their products, but they're good, so whatever. Also on my last build, something that people were roasting me about was the fact that I had uh, ratchet straps for my tie downs. Yes, they were not ideal and I knew that all along. So ideally, you wanna have these and these are spring-loaded turnbuckles. These are from also Torque Lift, the company. They're not the really fancy, expensive fast guns that are like $800. I think these ones were about 250 for a set of four. I've honestly noticed a huge difference when I'm like off-roading or going on any kind of terrain where it's a little bit rough or bumpy. Um, since I have the spring-loaded, whatever you wanna call these things, turnbuckles, the, the camper, the camper is not nearly as like rigid and stiff. So things don't go flying in the back of the camper like they used to. They used to really just like fly off onto the ground because since there was no play with the ratchet straps, the camper was just very, the camper basically absorbed all of the shock from the road, if that makes sense. Anyways, these, these are really cool. I like them. So back here, on the rear of the truck, I had to add uh, this, this platform. It's about four inches tall and it's just made out of wood. It's treated with Turner's, Turner's water treatment, whatever that stuff is called. Yeah, I built this because basically this camper actually is supposed to go in a smaller truck like a Tacoma and the beds in Tacomas are about six inches shorter, I believe. And so if this was just sitting directly on the truck bed, there wouldn't be enough space between the bottom of the camper here and the truck bed rails. So I had to build this platform for it to sit on top of. And then over here, this is really cool actually. I So I realized like I have so much space under this platform. What do I wanna do with it? I don't want it to go to waste. Eventually I might build some kind of drawer system, but for now I took some PVC pipe, put a little end cap on there. And we got a fishing rod in there right now. It's an eight foot fishing rod, so there was nowhere to put it inside of the camper. Nowhere really good to mount it on the outside. So I figured I'll just make this little fishing rod holder underneath. So that's pretty nifty. Okay, I think we pretty much covered everything about the truck itself. Now let's talk about the camper. It's a 1985 Slumber Queen. Slumber Queen is actually the manufacturer who made the camper and it has just coincidentally become known as the Slumber Queen on my channel because you don't really see these that often. They are out there. I have seen them every now and then, but I think they were discontinued sometime in the 90s. But yeah, it's made 1985, vintage, old. Um, I completely redid the inside, which we're gonna get into in just a moment here. There's not much else to say. It took a long time to redo it. So uh, let me just just start showing you some things. I guess before we get into the actual camper, let me just show you what I've got stored in the truck. Um, it's nothing exciting, but might as well show you exactly what we're working with here. So this is the access cab model, which is great because I could actually access the back seat in the Tacoma, you couldn't do that. You had to like fold the front seat forward and reach into the back, which was really annoying. But over here on this side, we just got fishing backpacks, some, some waders that I just got. In this tub here, we have some random backpacking miscellaneous stuff down here. This is pretty cool. I got this, I got this device at Harbor Freight and it's basically, it's a portable battery pack. It has jumper cables on it, so if you're back battery ever dies, you could jump start it with this. And there's also an air compressor on here, which is pretty cool too. It doesn't do that well with my tires because my tires are so like beefy. So it takes forever for this thing to work, but you never know when you're gonna need it. Got some fishing nets, little portable. This thing's a lifesaver. 
buddy heater. Um, I've used it while truck camping, tent camping. I've used it in this camper many times. It's great, highly recommend for the winter. And that's, that's it over here. Coming around to this side, let's open her up. Up here in the front seat, I keep my camera bag. This has all my camera gear, drone, extra batteries, all that kind of stuff. I got my laptop bag down here, which has my laptop and all my computer related things. And then I also have shopping bag down here. I should show you this as well. Here in these first gen Tundras, there's this space here that doesn't really get utilized. It's just empty space. So I got this basket and I have random things in here, random miscellaneous stuff. Over here in the back, we got a seven gallon water jug. Save a lot of money when you're buying water by the gallon like that and just storing it in an actual jug. Plus you're not wasting all kinds of plastic. Underneath that, we just got some tools. This is a socket and ratchet set. These are 100 watt solar panels. I've got two of them. And these charge my Jackery external battery that I'll show you in a little bit to my power station and the fact that I have solar for it is great because it lets me stay off the grid and still have electricity. Also got a camping stove for when I wanna camp out, cook outside. Got a spade, cause you guys know what this is for. All right, that's enough of that. I thought you guys might be interested in just to see how I have things stored away in the truck because there is a lot of valuable space in the truck that I utilize to store my gear. So on the outside of the camper we have on this side, this is where my propane gets stored. It is a 20 gallon propane tank, I think. Something like that. I don't know exactly, to be honest. It's a standard size that you typically see with the barbecue. And yeah, that just gets mounted right there. That propane, I was using this for like half of a year and I went to refill it and barely any propane was gone. So that stuff lasts forever. On the actual exterior of the camper, since it is from the 80s and it's old and vintage, I went and I resealed everything, all of the seams, all of the joints, um, the roof, just I resealed everything with Dicor lap sealant. So I resealed everything, I resealed the windows, I replaced all the exterior screws with new neoprene washers so it does not leak at all, which is awesome because there is some water damage on the inside from the past because it's from 1985, but as of now, no leaks. Okay, this is what you guys have been all waiting for and I'm sorry that it took us so long to get here, but let's just, let's just go right in and I'll show you guys around. See, this is, this is that step in action right there. Boom. All right, folks, and welcome to the inside of the Slumber Queen. Now, if you have been friends of the channel for a while now, and you've already seen the interior of this thing many, many times, but if you're new here, welcome. This is it, this is my humble abode. This is my renovated vintage truck camper. So let me just start showing you guys around. Starting down here, I wanna point this out. This might not be a big deal to some of you, but I personally think this is very important. I've got a doormat here, and if you're gonna have a van or a truck camper or an RV, anything, make sure, make absolute sure you have a doormat. This one says, mi casa es tu casa. You can't really see it anymore, but that's what it says. When I first got this camper, it was like completely vintage from the 80s. Everything was the original, like wallpaper, colors, everything just looked, it looked cool. Um, and to some people, you might prefer that old vintage style, but I went ahead and did a complete like overhaul. It started off as just, I was planning on doing a little bit of light painting and, and just, you know, really simple, relatively easy things that weren't gonna take a, a long time. And it ended up turning into a like six month affair of tearing everything apart and really just learning as I go as I went because before that I was not a DIYer so it was a lot of trial and error but I think overall things turned out nicely I do actually have an entire camper renovation series here on YouTube so if you're interested in watching the renovation process seeing me tear everything down and rebuild from scratch, learn, make a lot of mistakes along the way. If you're interested in that kind of thing, make sure to check that out. I believe I actually have a playlist called Truck Camper Renovation. Either way, um, I'm gonna show you pretty much everything that I did. Up here, we've got these beautiful dark gray cabinets. The cabinets were already here, but I repainted them, sanded it all down, painted it. I painted all of the hardware and the hinges black because I think it looks nice with the dark gray got these natural wood color doorknobs. That accents really well with this nice natural wood color trim that I have over all of the corners. 
So I got these little eye hook, eyelet hook latches, whatever these are called. And that's because I used to, in my old build, I don't know if you could see that, but I had these types of latches where this part basically goes into a receiver that's mounted on the bottom side of the cabinet. And when you close it, this snaps into the receiver and that's supposed to hold it shut. But the problem was when I was going on any kind of rough road, I would come back here and these would have just like completely flew open. All of the stuff flies onto the ground, complete mess. So these have been really, really awesome. And that just goes to show sometimes the simplest solution is the best solution because super cheap, super easy, but nothing has spilled out since. Over in this cabinet, I've got, I've got some plates, I've got some bowls, um, kettle, mug all my coffee stuff is in here got this really nifty folding folding uh cutting board that has a knife inside this is great because it helps save space so that's what we've got going on up there over here in this cabinet again another one of those eye hook latches not much going on we got dry pantry goods so sauces pasta potatoes dry pantry goods that kind of stuff. So this is kind of funny. I actually, I left the inside of the cabinets all with the original wallpaper and the original wood. So it's kind of like when you open this up, you could see a, a little window into the past of what this camper used to be. Cause that wallpaper right there was pretty much what was everywhere on the walls. I thought it would be funny to leave that. And I was kind of too lazy to fix it. Up in this corner, we've got my carbon monoxide alarm, of course. If you're gonna be cooking or staying inside of any small space or any space indoors in general, you always wanna make sure you got a carbon monoxide alarm. This is where I keep my shoes. I've got hiking boots, some sandals, running shoes, more boots. Yeah, shoes. And then up here, we've got my clothing. This is just shirts, jeans. I don't have that much clothing and it all fits nicely in here. So it is pretty perfect. Up above here, we've got a couple things. This is my vent system. It's just a little hand crank one. I, does, I don't have an electric fan that a lot of the van builds have, like the Fanatic, fa Fantastic Vans, I think they're called. I will definitely like to add one in the future, but this is what it came with. Let's in a good amount of air. I haven't really had to live in very hot temperatures yet, so I guess we'll figure that out when the time comes. Over here, this is a little 12 volt light that I installed. Um, I installed a few of these around the camper. They are 12 volt, low energy drawing. They're super cheap on Amazon. I think they were like 10 bucks or something. Thing, but yeah, they work pretty well. This, this is my pride and joy in the camper. This is definitely the best looking part of the camper. And it also is the most functional. And it just, I spend a lot of time here. It's the kitchen. I love to cook. You guys know this about me. You guys know I cook all the time. And so it's great to have an actual kitchen in my camper. It's really nice. I redid this whole thing and I'm very proud of the way it came out because I think it looks pretty good. Starting over here, we got this for, for my tap, for my water tap. I used a cold inlet, a cold inlet faucet. And basically it just turns on and off. It allows the water to flow and it turns off. There's no hot and cold. I don't have any kind of like heated water in here. So I just needed a way to turn the water water on and turn it off. That works great. Over here, I did initially do a hand pump sink and I thought that a hand pump sink would be the way to go, but then I realized that I probably don't wanna have to pump all of my dishes by hand because I have so many dishes. So that's why that's here. I have both now. This sink, uh, it was super cheap. I got this at Ikea, the sink. I think the sink was $25 or something like that. And it's a really nice stainless steel sink. Now the counter, the countertop itself, I also bought this at Ikea and Ikea is good at having Having like one really good value cheap option that's just way cheaper than all the other options because this counter beautiful counter I think it was like $40 and it's made out of particle board with some kind of veneer plastic on top so it's not like a really high quality material but it looks great and it feels really good and it's lighter than like a butcher block yeah I, I like it it's cool and then up over here I have a paper towel holder that I got on Amazon this just sticks on there so there's my paper towels I've got a window here all right, and over here, we got a few things. This is actually the original stove that was in the camper when I got it. It's a three burner stove, runs off of the propane that you saw. I thought that it would be cool to leave it in to A, save money. And also, it's, I think it looks nice and it's a cool way to like how I have in the cabinets, a little window into the past of what used to be is still present in the in the renovation, which I think is cool. Up here, this is also, this was the stove that came, or this was the, what is this thing called? The hood 
This is the hood that came with the camper. It used to be silver. I cleaned it, sanded it down and painted that black. So that looks really nice and modern. It doesn't have a fan or anything. It just has a little vent over here. Um, so it's not that functional, but I think it looks good. Over here, I got a couple hooks. These are just magnetic hooks and those hold tongs, whisk. And this is cool, another Ikea purchase, this nice little shelf. Uh, this I think was like $15 or something. So Ikea, Ikea is a good place to go if you're looking for cheap, nice looking stuff. It's not the highest quality sometimes, but it's still, it's good enough. And uh, yeah, I just keep spices mainly and some oil. And then of course, let's just quickly talk about this beautiful subway tile that we installed. And if you didn't already catch it, this is peel and stick. This isn't real tile, which you probably already knew. But in case you were wondering, this this just comes in sheets and you just peel the one side off and you stick it on and you gotta cut around the edges. And it is kind of hard, but after you, you know, give it a shot, it you get you get the hang of it pretty quick. At one point I was gonna do real tile and then I realized like, I'm not gonna put real tile in here. It's gonna weigh a lot, it's gonna cost a lot, and it's gonna be a pain in the, the rear, you know? Moving on down beneath the kitchen counter, these doors, original doors, painted wood accent knobs, of course. Underneath the sink, we have typical underneath the sink stuff. Cleaning supplies here, you got disinfecting wipes. My sink drains directly outside. I don't have a gray water tank. And the reason is because I couldn't really find a container that would fit under here that would drain properly from the sink. So it just drains outside. I use a biodegradable soap anyways. So it's, it's not harming the outside for me to just drain out onto the outside. And this is just a normal drain tap that goes to the outside. This is the cold water inlet that runs directly to my faucet. And this, I got a couple connections on there. This tubing runs all the way along the side here, all the way through here, through there. And my water pump is on the other side in there. So this connects directly to the water pump. I've got it held in place by these little cable management, tube management clips, which is really nice. And over here, we've got a box of miscellaneous tools and like connections and extra caulking and screws and bungee cords and all kinds of just random stuff. This is like my random box to store things that could come in handy. Got a bag of tools because you always need tools while you're gonna be on the road. Back here, my laundry detergent gets stored. And over on this side, I just store like my cast iron, my pan, a pot, bread items, and measuring cup. Not that organized, but I know where everything is and I know what goes here. And then this right here, this is the switch to my water pump. This turns the water pump on and off. And that also I've got protected by this wire tubing and that runs along all the way right next to the water the water tube and then that goes into where my battery is stored as well this right here this is my main power source while i'm on the road this charges my phone my camera gear my laptop all that kind of stuff it's the jackery explorer 1000 it's a 1000 watt hour and 1000 watt power station and this thing is a beast it charges with those solar panels that i showed you earlier but it also charges with normal 110 volt plug. Get that out of the way. All right, and under here, I'm not gonna take it out cause you don't really need to see it, but this is a box that contains my water tank. It's an 11 gallon water tank. It's not the largest water tank, but it's, I, I just travel by myself and I don't really use that much water. So that works. It's the one that it came with and I decided to just keep it. Over here, we got a couple things. This is just a drawer with like can opener, silverware, cutlery. This is the only drawer in this camper. And then down here, and here is where I keep all the electrical components. Let me show you. So my electrical system is kind of a mess and I'm gonna have to redo it because I'm actually having electrical issues right now. And what the problem is when I bought the camper, this was their like motherboard that they basically had all their electronics hooked up to and running off of. And this is a char some kind of controller that primarily is used if you're gonna be using shore power. So where it plugs in on the outside of the camper, which I already told you I'm not gonna be using. But instead of taking this out and redoing all the wiring, I kind of just built on top of of it, which I think is a mistake. I'm gonna have to go back and completely take this out because I'm not gonna really use it at all. But what I did was I basically, for now, for the meantime, I just added this 12 volt fuse block up here. And so my water pump and my lights basically just connect to this fuse block. And that's what I'm using for now. But like I said, I'm gonna have to kind of go back in here and rewire everything. So this is not, this is not how it's gonna be in the future. 
Outside here, this is actually the battery that powers everything in the camper. It's not that good of a battery. It doesn't have a high capacity. I kind of just got it at AutoZone. It is an RV marine battery, but it just doesn't have that high of a capacity. So I'm gonna have to swap that out eventually. And I might even get two batteries. Right now, the camper is powered only by the alternator on the truck. In the future, I do plan on getting some solar panels and putting them onto the roof. That way I just have much more reliable, consistent power without having to drive all the time because that's kind of a huge drawback of this system is if you're sitting and you're posted up for a couple days without driving, then your battery is just gonna be completely drained. Solar is coming in the future, that's what I'm trying to say. And this is the second largest main thing that we've changed since the last tour. And that is this whole area is now done. It used to be just a wide open gap because there was a fridge here at one point that was like a front facing and you open it from the front. I took that out because it didn't work and there was just like this huge gaping hole here that I traveled with for a while and it was cool while it lasted, but now it's done. Over here, this is my fridge. It is a Iceco, Iceco is the company. I think it's a JP30, I believe. And it's kind of a small, it's kind of a small fridge, but when you're, I'm just traveling solo like this, I think it holds more than enough food. I've got a case on it. This is just an insulating case to help keep things cool. And this, this right here, this thing is really, really cool. I kind of splurged on it. Um, it's a sliding mount and it's sold from Iceco. So it's specifically for this fridge and it was expensive but as you could see, it's heavy duty and it locks into place. And I think it's very high quality. So definitely worth it if you're going to, uh, to have one of these fridges. Up here, I also built this little shelf just to have extra storage because I didn't want to have this huge space go unused. So I built a little shelf here and up here, I just store like a yoga mat, my fly fishing boots, toiletries, socks and underwear, all that kind of stuff. So it's really nice to have this extra bit of storage here. Up in this cupboard up here, we've got pretty much just all electrical stuff. So different chargers, wires, cables, adapters. Yeah, just this is pretty much an electronics cupboard up here. I do also have some boot cleaning supplies, but yeah, it's just random storage. This is my tallest, largest cabinet in the camper, obviously. And I do have a little shelf that I put in here just to create some kind of division for storage and organization. And this is basically up top here. I keep my jackets, sweaters, coats, some winter stuff, my base layers, you know, knit cap, that kind of stuff. So that's all easily accessible. And then down here, I just have some miscellaneous gear. I've got a folding camping chair, my fly fishing bag, some propane, bear can, and uh, yeah, that's that cabinet. Over here, this is pretty cool. This is the thermostat that controls my furnace. So this camper does have a furnace in here. It runs off of the propane and it really, really gets it super toasty warm in here. I remember being in here when it was like 10 degrees, eight degrees and inside here, it was extremely warm because of this heater here. Oh boy. I am getting tired of talking. This is, there's a lot to explain. There's a lot of little details um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff. So like I said, if you want to see some more detailed explanations of any of this stuff, go check out that playlist on my channel of the camper renovation because then you could see more specifically how I did things and how things are set up if you're interested. Okay, well, this, this is my couch. This is where I hang out. This is where I chill. The couch, it's awesome to have a couch. Um, there used to be a table in here. I took that table out to create extra space. I might have to do a table again in the future. I might get one of those like swinging ones just to utilize and have the most space possible. And up here, these are the curtains. Curt, curtain, curt, curtains, curtains. See, I've improved. A lot of you guys in the last video, you don't like how I say curtains because I said curtains, curt ins like curtains i guess i enunciate the t too much it's really curtain curtains now i'm overthinking it and it's hard to say it but the curtains the curtains here look at these these are fire but yeah these are these are curtains that i made myself i hemmed these i to be honest i used the iron on hem i didn't actually like sew them but i think they came out really well and they were really cheap they're from walmart that just goes to show you don't need to go to a seamstress or a tailor to have nice curtains. You could make them yourself. As for the curtain rods, these were really cheap curtain rods at Home Depot. These are literally like a couple bucks per rod. Um, and I think they look really nice. They're really easy to install. You just have these brackets here 
and that's that. The window sills here used to be brown and I painted them all black just to match the more modern looking aesthetic in here. <sighs> Maybe I'll just go to bed, take another nap. <sighs> All right, and this is the bedroom area. There's not a whole lot going on up here. This is actually the only space that I kind of left completely untouched. For the most part, I did, I did do a little bit, but I liked the juxtaposition of having the old camper look in my bedroom area. And that is, you know, in stark contrast to the more modern looking rest of the camper. This is the best part of the bedroom. These make all the difference in the world. Let's be real. Back over there, there's a little pocket that I use for book storage. There's also a little fan for when it's hot. I use this space to also store stuff while I'm not sleeping. The bed itself, the bed under here, this is just an Ikea mattress. It was like 70 or $80. It's really thin, which is good because I didn't want a great big tall mattress because that way, I would have even less headspace. Ikea, again, coming in clutch. It's been really cold where I have been lately, so I'm also using my down quilt on top just to double up. Custom curtains over here, and I have a bit of window reflectix over here. I had a curtain over here before, but it hung too far this way. I feel like it was limiting on my space, so I just use window reflectix instead, and I think it opens up the space a lot better. That's the bedroom. Oh, I forgot to mention, I also have another window vent over here above my bedroom area. But the cool thing about this one is this completely pops open like that. So a lot of the time I like to wake up in the morning, peek up through this little porthole and check out what's going on around outside. The last thing that we did not talk about, I'm sure there's other things, but this is the main one, is the floor. And it's luxury vinyl plank floor. It's the snap lock kind. You kind of just cut it to size and then you snap them together. And yeah, it looks really good. It's supposed to be scratch resistant, water resistant. And then I have these quarter rounds that cover the gap between the floor and the wall. Those I think accent really well in here and look really professional. And yeah, that's the floor. The floor I think looks beautiful. Well guys, I think we did it. I think we covered everything there is to cover. Um, I'm sure I'm for forgetting a couple of little things here and there. So if you do have any more questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. Hopefully I could get back to you with an answer. If not, make sure to check the truck camper renovation series that is on my channel because like I said, I go into detail on how I did everything and how everything is set up. So if you're curious more to learn more about the build, make sure to go check that out. This is my 19, 85 renovated vintage truck camper that I've been living in. And thank you guys for joining along for the tour. I hope that you got something out of it. I hope you got some inspiration, some motivation, or you just checked out the rig and you thought it was cool, whatever. Anyways, thanks guys. Thanks like always for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and maybe even consider subscribing. You should subscribe. All right guys, go out there and go on some adventures of your own. Live life, beat the status quo. Y'all know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.